Yamaha is famous for their conservatory pianos, the C-Series. Today, we look at the G-Series from Yamaha, the modern day GC1, and talk about how we got here. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Yamaha. How did we get here to GC1 territory? Because there used to be C's, there used to be GP1, there was a GH1, a GB1. It, it can be very G. confusing. And, and so I think that's why you know we're here today to kind of shed some light on what is the G series from Yamaha and why if I'm looking at one, it's made in Indonesia. If I'm looking at another, it's made in Japan. And the, the rich history of it, you know, you see there was a G1. Originally there's the G1, you know, there's a GH1 introduced at some point. Uh, then you see a GA1. You see those here in the U.S. sometimes, but you know there's speculation that was only for the in, uh, uh, for other markets, not for the U.S. markets. But you see GA1s. Um, it made a natural transition to a GB1 and a GC1, uh, and so lots of you know those are lots of skews. Well, um, not only that, but for example, the GB1 went all the way up to having a K. It went a GB1E. There, I mean, they used to have all these different letters behind it to designate a change in the model. So are you confused yet? Because it can be confusing. It, and in, in Yamaha's philosophy, this is pure speculation, but their philosophy is to have a model number, the C3. And you know, you know, if you look after the C3 on a lot of serial numbers, it sometimes looks like the next uh, letter is part of the serial number, but it's actually uh, notating the different iterations. So there was a C3A, a B, a C3. And so they, they notate after the after the skew is what we call it in you know in the industry the skew is C3 um, and then they'll have like another notation of of an uh, usually it's a letter and it will kind of give you what the era is um, same with the U1 there's a U1H a U1G um. and that's a timeline that they put in there to actually keep track of improvements made to the piano since its invention sometimes it's an increase in a type of, or a swap in the uh, for a better type of uh, felt mm -hmm. uh, for underlying, and, and it could be a change in the hammer felt. It could be a change in the size of the pins. The type of uh, string. The type of string. And it's interesting because Yamaha doesn't usually publish these things. It's no, very hard. It's, it, it, it's very hard to even get. I'll tell you what, it took me a long time to get, and I got it from someone at Yamaha. I couldn't find it on the internet. But it was from about the mid-60s. Actually, I tried to get it from 1960 forward, from about the time that Yamaha first started really showing up here in the US. Showing up in, in America, there was Yamaha America. Is just watch their piano models and when, what year they became active. So, like, when was this, the C series as we know now, the C1, regardless of what gen they're on, uh, when now they're on like the, 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 the X series. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's like the C1X and so on. But that piano has like a what a 2010 or a 2011 date or 2009 yeah, or something. Yeah, when they started doing it. So when was the original C1? It was sometime like a 92 or sometime around then. And then when did they kind of stop making the G models? When did the G series become the conservatory mm -hmm. series, the C series? And it's very hard. And so the only real difference that people say on you know all over the internet is the years it was active. They don't they don't talk about what's different about it because it's really hard to speculate and say it is. And unless you're a manager of the production line and you have a history of being there and knowing when those changes were made, there's no reason to discuss those changes. And so Yamaha does a really neat thing where they hold on to model numbers for a very long time, with the exception of the G-Series. Right. And so the U1 has been the U1, has been the U1 forever. Um, and, uh, and you know, you can go all the way back to the 70s and the 60s and find a U1, and then today you can find a U1 uh, upright. Uh, same with the C3. It's been a C3 forever, all the way since the inception of it, all the way till present day. There's still a C3. Uh, the G series, on the other hand, though, has notated it almost like a budget-friendly, made for the masses, made for a club, made for a bar, make, made for um, you know, just it's a workhorse instrument. And so the G1, um, and I actually owned a G1 for a little bit. Really a cool instrument, and you know, you can find them from the 80s um, into the 90s. Uh, but uh, and I thought it was a fantastic product offering because you know the modern day G series is not made in Japan. 
and you know there's a stigma behind where the manufacturing takes place um, regardless of you know the craftsmanship the recipe the materials all that stuff you know Yamaha still states it's the highest quality all done in their facility really put together but it's their entry price point manufactured in Indonesia uh, that their entry panel point you know just 15, no, now it's 20, 25 years ago, was still coming out of Japan. And so, you know, some people really gravitate, that resonates with them, and it resonated with me. Um, but the G1, the GH1 is similar, was also manufactured in out of Japan. Uh, and then the GA1 also coming out of Japan. But the GB1 is kind of the changing point. And when the GB1 came around, the GC1 was right there as well. Uh, and the GC1 is kind of the idea of making an entry line conservatory piano. conservatory piano that's manufactured still in Japan, but a, you know a lesser build than the C series. So they're you know they're premium piano, but they still want to offer this entry line Japanese piano. Right. Um, and so you know the GC1 has done really well in it's markets. It's a great piano. It's a cool. It's a cool piano, um, and the price has continuously you know climbed up with with the price. And so the MSRP I think today is around twenty five thousand dollars. Um, so it's not, it's, and it's a five foot three piano. Um, so it's your five foot three Yamaha, um, really entry into having a, a baby grand from Yamaha that's manufactured at their headquarters. I'm trying to remember, they put duplex scaling on that mm -hmm. piano as too, and that was the first non-conservatory piano that they built that, where they put duplex scaling on it. That was one of the attraction things about redesigning the scale for that piano to make it more singing and more uh, capable of being like a conservatory grant. Yeah, and so they're trying to offer as much as they can at a price point that's you know less than going taking the deep plunge into the C series right. because that can be you know very expensive. Um, and so Yamaha you know created this line uh, in the late '90s, early 2000s. The GC1 really popped up, and that's uh, they have a GC1 and a GC2, same scale design as the C1 and the C2. So the root of those of those skews, GC1, the root is C1. Um, so it's a G of the C1, um, and so you get that same scale design that they do on the on the C1. But you, of course, they don't get all the that comes with the X series now, the German strings, um, right. the Bosendorfer, all it's those Bosendorfer technologies. Essentially, a very very affordable grand piano of good quality from Yamaha. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take a listen to it. Ted's going to play it for us, but we're going to listen to a GC1, a modern day one, uh, really a fantastic instrument, uh, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the G series.
you know, over the years, Patrick, I've gone and played gigs where they had a GC1 there. And the longer that piano stayed there and it got serviced on a regular basis, the more like a conservatory piano it became. We had, we had uh, a rental one here that turned into a pristine piano mm -hmm. uh, because it was serviced and tuned and, and uh, so many times throughout the year. I'm glad you said that because I think with this G series, there's a lot of them out there. Um, a lot. It was a very affordable piano, and they, there were a lot of them sold. And I love my G1 when I had it. I just recently upgraded to a, a Kawhi GX2, but the G series, you know, you and we do really well when we get these used G1s in, these G2s in. Um, the GH1s, not as popular, but still very popular. Um, and then, of course, the GA1s. Uh, but really, they've held their value really well. And like you said, the fact that when they've been they've been maintained well, when they've been tuned well, and when they've been, uh, you know, on, I think on the GC one you're talking about, we actually replaced the hammers on it uh, after a while and added uh, what 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 renners? Uh, Abel hammers. Abel. Okay, so uh, so you know, you, we did a little bit of maintenance to it, and really, it sang. No, it was <laughs> people started requesting that piano specifically. Because hey, I want that piano that, that that you put the new hammers on. And so and so, there's a whole bunch of them out there. And you know, this is you know one of the reasons we made this video is we see a lot of G series. Um, and over the years, you know, I, I think of six seven years ago, they were selling, you know, the, a G one would sell for somewhere between four or five thousand dollars. Today, they're selling for you know eight to ten in really good yeah. conditions. It can be eleven or twelve thousand dollars for a pristine G one. Um, and people are over the moon about getting them right. because they they. Japanese manufactured, Yamaha brand name, great playing, sounding action, and uh, just nothing to complain about on right. it. Uh, and so, you know, over the years, I would say the G series has really earned its reputation um, as being value oriented and being, uh, you know, a great starting point for someone who, who doesn't want to take the plunge into buying a new piano. Right. Um, or if they're looking at a new piano, maybe. It's, it's right there, right underneath the conservatory line, and uh, you know it's more affordable, and it's still, you're not sacrificing any quality. We have a lot of uh, local music schools here that have GC1s in them mm -hmm. as well. That is like their main grand piano. When you walk in a lot of places for years, that was when you walked in, you saw that grand piano on their little recital stage, but it was always a GC1. Yeah, well, if you guys have ever owned any of the G series, again, can range from G1, GH1, GA1, GB1, GP one. GP one was for just a couple years, and you, usually we see them with a disc here, a D G P one. Right. Um, and it, I think it was right at the end when they stopped making uh, the five foot piano. So it was right. like a four eleven, a GP one. Um, if you've ever owned any of these models, please leave comments. Say what you liked about it, what you didn't. I know some people have issues with scale designs on the GH one. Um, I haven't run into that issue, but um, but really, you know, they're they're fantastic quality. Uh, it comes from a, a trusted manufacturer like Yamaha and you get a lot of the Japanese manufacturing benefits. Uh, and so if you've owned one, please leave comments, your experience owning it, playing it, uh, and if maybe you've switched to a C3 or switched to a different brand. I know a lot of people are, hey, if you're in that price range, make sure you check out Rip Mueller, make sure you check out uh, right. you know, some of the entry line pianos that are from other manufacturers, because in that price range, you can sometimes find something that resonates better with you. Right. Uh, and so please leave comments, let us know what you think of the G series from Yamaha. Um, we will touch on the C-Series as well, and so we might do a comparison of those two because they are, you know, the two sides of, of, of Yamaha brand pianos. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ted Barslew, I'm Patrick Marr with the Alamo Music Center here in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to check out our other videos that are coming out. We've got lots of great content.